and how are you? I hope everything is good. It's been a while since I've recorded a video uh, for my uh, lecturette series, and I, I wanted to share with you something absolutely beautifully amazing that I recently heard. If I get any of the facts wrong, the, uh, the general point of the story will come across, and I apologize in advance. Those of you who know the story may know slightly different details, but you'll get the point. The story I want to share with you today has to do with the power of prayer. It appears that this woman got a phone call one day from a nursing home, letting them know that her mother, who was a resident there, had passed away. This woman was a traditional Orthodox Jewish woman, and she made sure that her mother's burial was 100% according to halacha, according to Jewish law. As a result of that, she never had the opportunity to see her mother one last time before her mother passed away. She had passed away when her daughter wasn't there. The Chavar Kedisha, the burial society, came, they took the body and they took care of preparing it properly for the burial. And indeed, as you might be aware, at an Orthodox traditional Jewish burial, there are there are no viewings. So this woman never really saw her mother for that last time. That we all hope and pray that we'll have the opportunity to see our parents or any dear loved ones to us for one last time for sure to be able to say goodbye. So anyway, um, she comes to the funeral. She goes to the funeral goes home and she's sitting Shiva. And after four days of sitting Shiva, she gets a phone call from the nursing home from her mother. Her mother wants to know, what's going on? Why hasn't anybody come to see me? No one's come to visit me. And needless to say, this woman faints <laughs> on the spot. They revive her, and when the confusion was cleared up, it seems that it wasn't the woman, the mother who passed away, but the mother's roommate who passed away. And the nursing home accidentally called the wrong family. The nursing home was suitably embarrassed, and they had to, they were now faced with the daunting task of notifying the correct family that not only had their mother passed away, but that she was um, already buried. The nursing home administrator picks up the phone, calls the number, contact number, uh, for this woman who indeed passed away. And before she has a chance to get a word out ed edgewise, one of the children who picked up the phone said, uh, thank you so much for calling, but if you're calling about my mother, we're not interested. We don't want to have anything to do with her. All she does is sit around all day and prays. And you know what she's praying for? She's praying that she's going to get a good Jewish burial. And guess what? You know what? We're not too happy with mom. And when she goes, we're going to make sure, do everything we can to make sure she does not get a proper Jewish burial. At this point, the nursing home administrator realized who she was dealing with and said, well, I'm sorry to tell you, but your mother's prayers have already been answered. It's an amazing thing. Hashem, who rules the world, will turn over circumstances in a way that no one could ever expect in order to answer the prayers of someone who offers them up sincerely. That's story number one. I hope that in and of itself inspires you. Let me tell you quickly story number two. Story number two has to do with a couple, a Jewish couple, an observant couple, who were married for 15 years and unfortunately they never had children. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. However, for some reason their prayers weren't answered. They went to medical doctors, they went to specialists, they went to famous rabbis throughout the world to ask for guidance, they went to the best doctors, they, their friends prayed for them, they took on extra mitzvos as a merit that they should have children, but for some reason it didn't seem like their prayers were answered. They never had children. After 15 years they decided that since, for some reason, they couldn't have children together, and it was a positive commandment, in fact, it's the first commandment in the Torah, is to have children, that even though they loved each other very much, they would get a divorce, so that each one could remarry and have the possibility of having children. They were heartbroken. A month after they got divorced, the ex-wife discovered that she was pregnant. Now, under normal circumstances, that might not be such a bad thing, because... A Jew was allowed to remarry their ex-spouse as long as there was no other Jew that they married in between. However, the exception to that rule is, is when the husband is a Kohen, a priest. Not a priest as in the Catholic Church priest, a priest as in the Jewish type of priest. There are three groups of Jews, the priests, the Levites, and the Israelites. So a member of the priestly family cannot remarry his wife after he's divorced her. So, oh my gosh, what do you do? So right away they started going to different rabbis to see if they could find a 
dispensation to allow them to get remarried. After all, they truly loved each other. It was 15 years. They tried. They didn't mean to get divorced. But whatever happened, what could they do? Is there some way to allow this man to remarry his wife? They went all the way to the top, the greatest of the greatest of the greatest, and nobody could find a dispensation. When he said to the rabbi, what should I do? The rabbi said, pray. He prayed for 15 years. Go to the Western Wall, go to the Wailing Wall in Yerushalayim and pray. Only God can answer your prayers now. He didn't know what to do. I mean, nobody was able to find a way out. But if the rabbi said to pray, he would pray. He went to the Western Wall and he poured his heart out. And an old man came over to him and asked him what the story was, what the problem was. And when this old man heard what his situation was, he screamed out at him. He said, go talk to your father, go talk to your father this old man like he was crazy. But he realized that if he was praying, and this old man who we didn't know, who we didn't recognize, said with such conviction, go talk to your father, maybe God is answering his prayer somehow. He booked a ticket to Cleveland, flew out to Cleveland, visited with his father. His father said, how are you? It's good to see you. How are you? How's your wife? And he said, Dad, I don't know how to tell you this, but we got divorced didn't have any children, and after consultation with various rabbanim, with various rabbis, we decided it was time to get divorced. And he had told them why. And then he told them the whole story, how his wife discovered that she was pregnant afterwards, and how he could not remarry her. And the father said, guess what? You can marry your wife. You could remarry her. You're not a Kohen. He says, what do you mean I'm not a Kohen? He said, when you were a little, little, little boy, when you were an infant, your mother and I never wanted to tell you now, obviously, God answered your prayers and saw fit that we revealed to you that you were adopted. You never really were a Kohen. You were just raised this way. Let's take comfort that in these difficult economic times, in these crazy times, where we're faced with threats of terror, with war, with economic hardships, that God always answers our prayers. He always hears them. He longs for them. And he'll always do what's right for us. Have a good Shabbos.